You may be seated. If you have your copy of God's Word, turn, if you will, to the book of Psalms, Psalm 9, the ninth Psalm. And we're going to continue with that theme. He's worthy. He's worthy of our praise. We're going to look at a couple of verses there in just a moment. But, you know, as uh, Thanksgiving approaches this weekend, I was thinking this week, um, it's probably about my favorite. You know, you don't have to buy a gift. You don't have to uh, decorate. You, you, you don't have to listen to Jingle Bells 2,346 times. You don't, you don't have to do all that. You just get to wake up. Smell, sit, wait, eat, take a nap, and go home. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good deal. It's a good gig. And I look forward to it so much. But, uh, you know, the, 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 the thing is, I hope that you will pause today and intentionally take in what God's Word would say about this. About what we're really supposed to be about every single day, not just one day a year. And how we should be people of praise. And this week the rush is going to hit, isn't it? I mean, tomorrow night's Monday Night Football. I mean, get with the program, right? I mean, uh, it, it kicks off good. And then uh, uh, if you're like us, you, you head out maybe Wednesday or Thursday. You've got a couple of places to go. And then you, you people that are, are uh, that kind of people, you, you, you go to the Black Friday sales that start on Thursday now. And I just wait till Friday and hit the dollar store and find Tammy stuff. And... and uh, um, <laughs> You miss the, the rush, but uh, it, it's all going to hit. But before it hits, let's talk about this praise that he's so worthy of. The ninth Psalm, two verses, as we think about he is worthy. Listen to what David said. He said, I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart, with my whole heart. I will tell of your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Let's talk about this praise. First of all, the who of praise. Notice what David said. He said, I will praise you, O Lord. Just, just in case there's any mistake about it, any confusion, I, I, I want to draw attention to the fact that this praise goes to God. To you, O Lord, I give you my worship, my adoration, my honor, my praise. Now, here's what praise is. It's giving acknowledgement towards someone and their attributes or their accomplishments. It's a little different than worship because in praise we talk about God, in worship we talk to God. There's, there's times for both. We need to talk to God at times in worship, and in, we need to have times of praise where we just brag about God. And David said, I want to brag about God, and I want to do so, giving credit where credit is due. It's to you, Lord, I give praise. I want to acknowledge the one that should be acknowledged. I want to give glory where glory is due. I want to put the attention where the attention should be. I, I want to acknowledge you, and I want to tell you what, that drives me, and I hope it drives you, that you would be a person of praise that gives attention where attention is due, especially when you come in here. Listen, we're not doing our job. If you leave here thinking about Kevin, about Brent, about Carrie, the praise team, or other people, we're only doing our job if we brought all attention to the one that deserves all the attention. Because he is the only one that it is about. David said, to you, O Lord, I give praise. Have you all ever heard the term ath leisure? Leisure. A T H leisure. It was put in the dictionary in 2016 when a new line of clothing came out. Athletic wear that is comfortable. People wear it all the time and they shouldn't be wearing it because uh, uh, they're not really working out and it don't look good on you. Trust me, it don't look good. And people wear this stuff when all they're doing is eating ice cream, sitting in the recliner. But it has turned into a $380 billion industry because of the level of comfort that it gives. And yet, 
people are wearing it, and they're not doing it, using it for the purpose it was intended for. Because the statistics have stayed the same on those who exercise. Nobody's exercising anymore because of athleisure clothing. But they're wearing it. And I think about that and I think, man, we, we come into this time and man, we give the appearance of praise. But are you really? That's, that's, that's one thing I can't do for you. Can't do it for you. I can't give it for you. If anybody is going to praise for you, it's got to be you giving God the praise that he deserves because he is worthy. And here's the, here's the thing. Here's the reason why we're doing this sermon series. He is. And just reminding you of how worthy and how awesome God is. The, the reason you may not really be praising him the way that he desires to be praised may be because you really don't know him the way he wants you to know him. Every day I pray a verse for every one of you. And it's Colossians chapter 1 and verse 10. Here's the verse I pray for you. I pray that you will walk worthy of the Lord, that you'll be fully pleasing to the Lord, and that you will be fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. I pray every day, God, help them to get to know you better. Because that's what I want to, I want to, I want to grow in knowing him because he's worthy of being known. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of a relationship. He's worthy of all. And I want you to know him. And so think about this. Whenever you're kind of going through your stuff and God's nudging you, God's convicting you, God's getting in your business, he's answering my prayer. Because you don't just get to know him in here. The who of praise. Let's talk about it secondly, the how of praise. Notice how David said, this is how I'm going to praise you, God. With my whole heart. David said, half-hearted praise is not going to do. Just going through the outward motions is not going to do it. I'm going to worship you today from the inside out with my whole heart. No doubt David, just like we all have, had, had seen people just go through the motions of praise and worship. And he said, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to praise you, Lord, with my whole heart, with everything in me, with my mind, with my emotions, with my will, with my everything. God, I'm going to praise you. And you know what helps me to do that? It's being reminded. It's doing this. It's reflecting. Look at what David said. He said, I, I, I'm going to reflect on your marvelous works. I will tell of your marvelous works. Here's what helps me to praise him the way he wants to be praised. When I reflect on what he's done. When I pause. And I think where I'd be had not God been doing his thing in my life. All it takes is a little bit of remembering. A little bit of reflecting. Here's another verse I pray every single day. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. I remind myself of this every single day. What do I have that I've not received? You ever hear people with a sense of entitlement? I think I need this. I deserve that. You better not do too much of that. You better not cry out for justice. You better cry out for mercy. But every day I'm reminded, Lord, I don't have anything I've not received. And God, I just thank you. And that, that gets me to the bottom of my heart kind of praising. Are you there? Is that what you're giving him? But now, I want to spend a few moments on the why of praise. Why do we praise? I'm going to give you some quick reasons. First of all, Praise gives God pleasure. Listen, when we come in 
to our quiet times, when we come into corporate worship, we're not here for your pleasure. Sorry to disappoint you. Right? You're not here for my pleasure. When I go into my quiet time, I, it's not for my own pleasure. Though there is pleasure in it, I worship Him. I praise Him so that He gets the pleasure. Because He is pleasured as I praise Him and worship Him. In Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11, look at what God's Word said. Thou art worthy, O Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy to receive glory and honor and power. For you've created all things for thy pleasure. They are and were created. You see... When we truly worship and praise, he is our, he, we get it all backwards. We, we come into church and we think, okay, we are, you are the audience and up here are the performers. You ever caught yourself there? That, that's not it. With real worship and praise, we all are the participants, not the spectators. I didn't come to spectate, I came to participate. And He is the audience. And we all are, are here to, to give Him the praise that He deserves. Now, in Psalm 54 and verse 6, David refers to praise as a sacrifice, a free will offering. He said, he said I, I, I'm going to give you this, God. It's an offering to you. I give it to you. Because you're, you're worthy of it. And it's for your pleasure that I give you this offering of praise, when he hears us praise him and, and bring out his attributes and tell of his marvelous works, he takes pleasure in that because he sees that we're not being inwardly focused people, but we're being God-glorifying people. He gets pleasure out of our praise. That's why he wants us to praise. Secondly, when we praise, it helps our attitude. You ever discovered that? You see, there, there are times that life just overwhelms us, doesn't it? And if we were going by our feelings, and whether we felt like praising God and worshiping God and thanking God, we really don't feel like it. Because life gets heavy at times. We get anxious, we get overcome by worry, and we get down and discouraged and depressed. It's hard. You know, Paul was a man arrested. His life was on the line. He was ch chained up. At any moment, the executioner could come down the hallway and said, you're going to die today. And in the midst of those circumstances... When he lost his freedom and everything that he longed for, he wrote these words in Philippians 4, verses 8 and 9. Look at what it says. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely and admirable, anything excellent or what? Praiseworthy. Think about these things. Put those things in your mind. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. And when the God of peace is with you, His peace will invade your heart, your mind, and your soul. What Paul is saying is as I reflect, there's always something to be thankful for. I can always call to my mind something to be thankful for. This week in our small group at our home, we sat around the circle and we went around the circle sharing what we had to be thankful for. You know why that was unique? Because people in our circle have been through some stuff this year. And it's, it's been a hard year. And yet they, they, they said, this is what I have to be thankful for. Listen. The devil wants to blind you to your blessings. The devil wants you to put your focus on what you've lost, what you don't have, how hard it is, how difficult it is, what you're missing, what's wrong, what's broken. But if we overcome through the warfare 
and put our minds on the things that we still have to be thankful for and praise God for it, it'll make a difference in our attitude. Listen, that the New Living Translation in verse 2 says, I, I will be filled with joy because of you. Praise helps your attitude. Praise will help you be a more joyful person. It'll help you get over all the isms, criticism, cynicism, pessimism, Uglyism, I don't know what, what your ism might be, but I'm telling you, there's some of you that need healed of your isms. And praise will help you do that. Praise brings victory over our enemies. God gives us weapons for doing battle with the enemy, and praise is one of those weapons. In Psalm 18 and verse 3, look at what David said. He said, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So, I'll be saved from my enemies. You see, the more I know Him, the more I focus on Him, and the less I focus on me, and the less I focus on my abilities, and the more I focus on Him and His abilities, and then I start relying on Him and His abilities instead of me and my abilities. And then I can fight off the enemy, the enemy that comes at me, this world around me, the flesh within me, and I can fight off all those lies and live in truth. And God says, I'm not defeated. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not without hope. I am an overcomer. I am victorious. I am able. I am strong in Him. And for the one who really walks with God, here's what God says. If you'll praise me, if you'll worship me, you'll come to realize this. I will give you victory. And there will be no temptation that will come at you, but what you can overcome, that temptation. There will be no problem that He can't get you through. There will be no sickness that He can't heal you from. There will be no mess that He can't clean up. And on and on and on. He is able. We have victory in Jesus. And that victory is sometimes appropriated when we choose to praise instead of pout. Amen. Even on days when I don't feel like it, and the devil's kicking me down, I got to get my focus on Jesus, and all that I have, and all that I am in Him, and praise God, if for nothing else, for the victory that's coming. It may not be here yet. I may not be experiencing it yet. But it's coming. And I can praise Him. Praise also invites God's presence. It invites His presence. In Psalm 22 and verse 3, David said this, God inhabits the praises of His people. In other words, when God sees His people worshiping Him and praising Him, he moves in on that. And he begins to work in ways that he would not normally work because he's showing up where the praise is. That truth is seen in Psalm 67, verses 5 and 6 as well. May the nations praise you, God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Then the earth will yield its harvest, and God, our God, will richly bless you. Do you hear what God's saying there? He's saying, okay, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to work in ways I would not normally work if you'll praise me, if you'll worship me, if you'll acknowledge me, if you'll honor me. I'm going to work. You know, one of the things I love in this world, more, oh man, I, I, I just love it. Is Tammy's cooking. <laughs> it's good. Brent and I both have on coats today. The difference, he, he likes to look like me. And, and so, uh, the difference though between mine and his is his abundant, mine won't. And, and, it just won't. And it's hot too. It probably won't be on six. But I love, man, I love her cooking. She can cook. Oh man, can she cook. And here's what I've discovered. The more I tell her that, the more she cooks. <laughs> it works out good. You 
And the more you praise him and give him glory and give him your attention and give him your focus and you pause and reflect and you worship the more he will work. He inhabits the praises of his people. And praise brings attention to God's mighty acts. In Psalm 150, I love that psalm. The psalmist tells us how our praise should be. And he says, to praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. And don't hold back, essentially, is what he's saying. Hey, I want you to flip with me. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I'm going to. Turn over to Luke chapter 17. It just keeps coming back to me. I've been hit with it several times this week. In Luke 17, there's an account beginning at verse 11 where Jesus was passing through Samaria and Galilee. And as He was passing through, the Bible says in verse 11... And following that he entered a certain village, and there were ten lepers. Now, leprosy was a skin disease, and it was considered so contagious that anyone who had leprosy would have to live outside of the community. They could not be among other people. And so, these lepers, these ten lepers had congregated together, and they were afar off, the Bible says. You ever felt afar off from God? They were afar off. But here comes Jesus, and He's passing by. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, verse 13, Master, not just Savior, Master. Is He your Master? Have mercy on us. So when He saw them, He saw them afar off. And He sees you afar off. He said to them, go show yourselves to the priest. Now, the reason this is unique is because those lepers could not get back into the community until they were healed, and it had to be validated by the priest. And so Jesus says, hey, I see you, I hear you. Go and show yourself to the priest and show him that you're healed and that you can come back to the community. Now, the deal was they weren't healed yet. But Jesus said, go show them. And so, verse 14, as they went. In other words, they had to start walking it out before they were ever healed. As they went, they were cleansed. And here's the thing I want to show you. Verse 15, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned. One. All ten were healed. But one returned. And with a loud voice glorified God. Fell down at the feet of Jesus. (laughs) Giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, "Where were, Were not the all ten cleansed? And this is a question. Where are the nine? Where are the nine? You see, one by one, they had been blessed. One by one, they had been healed. One by one, they had experienced the same miraculous work of God. But nine of them went back to life as normal. Only one came back to the feet of Jesus and said, Thank you. I give you glory. I praise you. Those nine are a picture of us so many times when God works in great ways, when He does the mighty acts, but we don't take time to come back and praise Him. So many of us are guilty of doing what these nine did that we never take time to go back. And give Him glory. I jotted down some things. 
Let me ask you, this Thanksgiving 2018, isn't it true God's done a great work in your life? Two, for some of you, listen, for some of you, did he get you through some sickness and a surgery this year? Anybody raise your hand. Some of you have been battling cancer. Some of you have been in surgery. Some of you have been in the hospital. Some of you have been through it this year. How many others did he provide for you and get you through a financial bind? How many others of you did he work you through some loneliness? Or he held you together when your heart was crushed? Or he comforted you when you needed it most? Or he held your marriage together? When it didn't look like it was going to make it. Others of you, you he, he stayed with you when your spouse walked out. And I'm just going to say it. Others of you, he worked you through your stupidity. Others of you, he helped you land a new job. Others of you, he brought your child home safely time after time. Others of you, he forgave you and has given you a fresh start. Others of you, he guided you through confusion to the right decision. Others of you, he protected you from danger and gave you health and ability. Others of you, he blessed your family and he kept your kids on the right track. Others of you, he gave you a glimmer of hope when discouraged came. Others of you, he brought you a friend when you needed one. Others of you, he did not give up on you when other people gave up on you. And we could go on and on and on, couldn't we? Amen. And the question I have for you is Jesus looking at you and saying, where are you? Where have you been? Where are the nine? I wonder if any spoiled brats slipped in here today. Where you been? Could he be saying, I've worked in your life. I've saved you. I've helped you. I've healed you. Have you developed spiritual amnesia? Have you forgotten? At the prison... We go over there. There's, there's one dude that sits right up real close to me when I preach. And when he likes what I'm saying, he'll say, Oh, brother, shake that bush. <laughs> Doesn't he, John? Shake that bush, brother. I'm going to shake this bush a minute. Okay? Listen. He be, yeah. He say he be preaching tonight, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. Let's just get honest. Are we not real good at leaning in, pressing into Jesus when we're hurt? When our child got a bad health report, when we're scared to death, when our marriage is on the rocks, when we're going through some stuff, some stuff in life, we'll start going to church, we'll start reading the Bible, we'll volunteer, we'll pray, we'll do this, we'll do that. And the moment we're through it. We let up. We forget His mighty acts. We put God back on the shelf. Our prayer life goes lax. And we are the nine. Isn't it amazing how we can pray and pray and pray? And God comes through. And it doesn't even dawn on us to get to the feet of Jesus and give Him glory. I don't want Him to be wondering where I'm at. I want to praise Him. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, look at these verses. 
Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. Not for all circumstances, but in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You're either in God's will and being a person of praise, or you're out of God's will and pouting. But he says, praise Him in all things. Praise Him. One of the word pictures for those verses is this, having a cough in the back of your throat and you can't keep from coughing and it just comes up. And that's what the Bible is saying. I've got praise in my heart and I can't hold it back. i just got to praise you. One other reason, in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, that we're to praise Him, is because praise gives Him a testimony. Look at 1 Peter 2 and verse 9. You're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you, here's why, so that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. I just want to praise Him because I'm not what I used to be. I just want to praise Him because by His grace, I'm set free. I'm delivered. I'm forgiven. I'm heaven bound. I have victory over this life. I have victory over the things of this world. I am not a person who's living in darkness. I'm in the light. He's brought me out. And I want to give him a testimony. I want to share with you one last thing. The win of praise. The win of praise. When do we praise? Psalm 145 and verse 2 says this. Gives the answer. Every day. Every day I'll praise you, Lord. Every day. Psalm 34 and verse 1. I'll bless you at all times, Lord. No matter what's going on, I'll bless you. I'll praise you. Now, hang with me just for a moment, and I'm going to quit. That'd be a blessing, won't it? I know there are people in this room. When we talk about the wind of praise, you're saying, Kevin, if you only knew what I've been through. If you only knew my heartache and my emptiness and my hurt. I want to say this to you. If you only knew how much I hurt with you. I do. Not everybody in this room had a good year. And I have grieved with you literally. David wrote these verses in Psalm 9 after he had fought Goliath, after Saul had come at him to threaten his life, after loss, after heartache, after pain, and he got to the other side through his praise. Choosing to be thankful when his feelings didn't dictate it. I shared with Carrie this week. You know, sometimes we get sloppy in our praise. We take God's blessings for granted. Sometimes we get sidetracked in our praise and we think it is about the performance. Sometimes we're spoiled in our praise because we think we're dependent upon all the stuff. But I think more often we're shallow in our praise. And here's why. Because our feelings aren't there saying to us there's something to praise Him about. We hurt. We're tired. We're overwhelmed. There's nothing inside of us that wants to give thanks and praise. I'm hurting. But our praise will remain shallow if we don't learn to praise God from our experience and through our experience. The 
So what that means is, there are times, God, I'm going to thank you for what I can think of to thank you for. I'm saved. Going to heaven. God, I'm going to praise you. Even though it's messy. And I don't have a lot of words. And maybe all I got right now is, I love you. I acknowledge you. You're worthy. And even though, God, I don't have a smile on my face, I've got a Savior in my heart, I'm going to praise you. Four times in those verses as the band comes, David said, I will, I will, I will, I will. I will, I will, I will, I will praise you. I will tell of your marvelous acts. I will give you glory. Sometimes it's just determination and intentionality. So I want to ask you, we left some worship for the end. Are you going to praise Him? He's worthy. Would it not be appropriate for some husbands in this room to grab their wife and say, we need to give God glory. He's walked us through a mess this year. Would it not be appropriate for some parents to gather their children or some friends just to get together and say, man, God, you're worthy. Or maybe just you all by yourself, just sitting there, kneeling, standing, whatever you want to do, <laughs> giving Him what He deserves because He's worthy. And dedicating yourself to not be one of those nine who were spoiled brats. Say, God, I'm not going to take you for granted. Your blessings for granted. I need you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And God, in the name of Jesus today, I pray.